We are the Meltdown Rockstar off from the House of the Dragon Meltdown Small Council this week, but have no fear as he will return for the season finale recap next week. We're getting into episode seven. All the spoilers will be here. If you're watching along with the show, we appreciate you watching along with us. The Meltdown is we're here to recap every single episode of the season. If you've missed any of our recaps so far, they're all there for you as we are inching ever so closer to the season finale of season two of House of the Dragon. The Dance of the Dragons now includes more active dragons, John, and that certainly helps your side of things. What a final shot of the traitor Rhaenyra and her new fleet of dragon riders. <laughs> you mean the true queen, Rhaenyra? Um, <clears throat> and then the traitors having to realize, oh, crap, they have dragons now, and turn around and tuck tail and run back. Yes, that was a very good final scene as uh, Aemon realized, uh-oh, we're in trouble. I am not for acknowledging Rhaenyra in any capacity, really, but that shot is fire, and if there was something we could put on the wall over here to help decorate. I think that that shot of her with her dragons behind her, uh, leading them to a future sacrifice, I think it's very interesting, in my opinion, to have that visually represented here in the studio. So we may make that happen. We've got producer sure. Tyler here with us as he is rocking and rolling with this season of House of the Dragon. We've got Ulf the White and Hugh Hammer, both bonding with their dragons in different ways. Tyler, am I wrong that it was kind of acknowledged that you can't be afraid of a dragon to bond with it, and now we've got Ulf, the uh, the, the white, terrified, and he ends up bonding with a dragon because of it? Yeah, that was the impression I got earlier, was that you had to show no fear and like make eye contact with the dragon, and that was not the case for Ulf. He to be was, fair, it's he also was the scrambling case for Adam. backwards, and the dragon didn't mind. Because Adam was like, oh my God, this dragon's coming at me. And then he's riding it like that, like nothing. Brian, I don't know if you feel this way. We appreciate Brian Pavlik being here on the small council today. Happy but, to remove, ceremoniously remove my council ball to participate in today's. Discussion. Yes, thank yes. you very much for going along with You're the welcome. theme here. Thank you. I wish Alf was on top of a dragon. Alf. I would like Alf. I think that that would be a very fun pairing, and, don't you? Uh, Alf would be great. Uh, you know, the <laughs> nose and everything would, you know, it, it, the snoot of the dragon or whatever you call it. Uh, kind of that symbol. I don't know anymore. But yes, Alf. E ETM dragon? Elf. Yeah. Uh, any one of them riding a dragon, Buddy the Elf would be good. Um, Ulf finally gets a story because uh, we were all yeah. hoping Ulf looked like a Bastion from Never Ending Story on Falcor there at the end. Uh, that's how I would ride a dragon, by the way, is just go crazy and, you know, try to draw out the Prince Regent and, you know, bring your big dragon buddy we have <laughs> continuously john seen these characters gone to throughout the series but now they're fully realized mm. as dragon riders was the payoff yep. in your opinion something that was legitimate was it entertaining for you to see that payoff because i i did get some jurassic park feels at certain times oh, definitely there was a lot of carnage there it was genuinely scary visual effects were on par with the the best parts of the series did you like the the sort of luring of dragon rider to dragon and that process. Do you think like it was appropriately represented in this episode, episode seven? Yeah. I don't, I don't know how it was represented in the book from the Wikipedia entries of the dragon seeds. It seems like it was more of like one by one. They kept going dragon. Nope. Nope. It's like slapping them. I, I just, all, for some reason, instead of biting or breathing fire, I just imagine the dragon just slapping the ones he doesn't like off the <laughs> platform until he finds one that he likes. But um, I do like the way it was represented. I like that we got to see into the dragon cave a little bit because it's always yes. just been off into the darkness every time. And so you actually got to see, oh, there's actually ground there. And there's actually, you know, the, the whichever one Ulf claimed, I forgot the name of it already, but like that dragon's back down there. What other dragons are, because there, there's always been dragons down there and I, it always is kind of interesting in this massive cave with all these dragons that all they have to do is go up and be like, Vermithor, come up. And then it's like first in line. All of a sudden it's like, where's all the other dragons yeah. that are just chilling down there? Um, but I thought the scene overall, overall was done well, especially Hugh's part. Ulf's part where he's rolling around in what I can assume is the uh, dragon's feces that he's rolling around in. Right. A little more interesting on how it was done. I know the whole no fear thing is how you're supposed to get it. And Hugh definitely showed that by like sacrificing being ready to sacrifice himself and all that. Correct. And basically saying, no, stand down. Um, but if you bond with a dragon, I guess you bond with a dragon. I guess you just so. bond anyway. Major, Silverwing is into that. Major dragon and donkey vibes from Shrek. 
Oh, oh yeah. and yes. silver wings. Yes. Honestly, like, my wife has tried so hard to make Allison and Kristen be Shrek and Fiona. Yeah. I don't know why, but <laughs> this actually does give some more Shrek vibes. Yeah. There's a lot of Shrek vibes in this season. It Absolutely. does feel like Adam of Hole kind of gets a raw deal because the big thing was supposed to be his pairing with Sea Smoke, mm-hmm. and it was addressed in this for sure. But it really isn't what you take away from the episode. It was kind of like the gap between the end of last episode yeah. and the beginning of this one. I do wish there was more between Corliss and him. Like when he went into his room and he basically is just like, okay, good. your leave's granted and good job. And then walked out. It's like, I need a little more here between right. you two. Clearly there's there's some more stuff here. Tyler, While we're on the topic, yeah. have you guys figured out what the rules are for being able to be a dragon rider? Because... At first, it kind of looks. Have the dragon not eat or vaporize you. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's well, all I, I mean, uh, that didn't work for Mad Eye Moody, that first dude that showed up. Well, like, it, and, and they make a comment in there, and I don't remember who it was that made the comment, but they're talking about basically go find all the bastards to come in, and there's at least half of that lineage comes from Targaryen, and yeah. one of them made the comment that in the brothel essentially was a Targaryen, mm-hmm. and it's like, how does because Targaryens have always been like that royalty line right. how did that happen how did they get to the point where the targaryens were the ones in the brothel as opposed to the other way around i understand if it was the other way around but that kind of made me curious like what is the lineage of some of these targaryens to ultimately lead to the ones that we have was, riding the dragon it was only fans for the time and we heard that the hair was a big drawing point it mm-hmm. seems you can make some good money i guess the payment mm-hmm. i still believe tyler that corliss is the most underutilized and biggest disappointment of the season. His character development, his growth, it appears as if he's no longer grieving, which is just days after the loss of his wife. I know that he's still trying to find his footing in this new world, his new role, and all of that, but it doesn't feel like we're getting a lot of depth of the character of Corliss. Maybe that will change here in this final episode, but it does feel like some missed opportunities with growing that character to importance. Definitely. We haven't really gotten a whole lot of depth uh, from the Valerian side uh, this season. Not as much as last season, anyway. And I would really like to just see what the actual sea snake is doing and like how that's actually affecting the world and uh, just if he can turn the tides for the war. Alan of Hull is promised that he's going to try to turn the tides, saying, I am of salt and sea, I yearn for nothing more. And then you have Corliss saying, well done. I mean, very just to the point, like, all right. Showing no real fatherly emotion with these two. And that is a, um, it's an interesting choice for sure, as these bastards are there in an effort to help his efforts. And it doesn't seem like there's really much that Corliss is doing to try to connect with these two spirits. No. I, something feuds between brothers have happened between from the dawn of time, Cain and Abel, and on through. I, I don't know what Master of Spoilers has read. I see there's going to be brotherly feud because we've have it in this show we already on the Targaryen side. Is there something setting up between these two brothers? Whether it's jealousy, you're in the air, I'm in the sea. Whether it's fatherly love or an appreciation, I just see these two now picking sides themselves going forward because of any of those reasons. And have we ever fully gotten that Adam is a bastard of Corliss? We have basically confirmed that Alan is, right? but it, and it, I assume Adam is too, kind of leading to that dragon lineage somehow mm-hmm. there but seems that way um I, f- I feel like we haven't necessarily seen that once again there was more i feel like they could have gotten yeah. into that aspect a little more when he goes and visits him once he comes uh on the dragon but th- there is more that i'm curious about with that family because he had overall that whole family has been very much underutilized and understanding i mean and i have kind of looked ahead to see how the book handles it but honestly up until this point like i tried to see what's the point of these two oh that one of them gets a dragon. I think it's actually Alan in the book that gets the dragon, but like that makes a little more sense, but it kind of drops off after that and you kind of don't hear as much. Now you hear more from Corliss, but from the kids, you feel, I feel like you don't really hear as much from just reading the Wikipedia entry. So I'm curious to see how it goes. Speaking of hearing a lot from the kids, Jace, he's got a mouth on him and he's not happy (laughs) and he's upset that he knows he's a strong. He doesn't need Mori Povich to determine that. He needs a mirror. That's it, because he can right. see it right there in his face, in his hair. He knows that he is a strong and not a Valerian. And his only real claim to legitimacy is the fact that he's a dragon rider at this point. And that is something now that these bastard dragon riders threaten of him. 
in his legitimacy of his standing within the Game of Thrones. Rhaenyra seems sympathetic, but at some point it feels like she's going to get tired of Jace just whining all the time. What did you make of Jace and his stand with Rhaenyra trying to make his case that he is basically <clears throat> being treated as an afterthought and is now being treated as almost completely illegitimate by her master plan that he helped hatch? Yeah, that was all his idea. The entire time it was happening, my wife's like, wasn't this his plan? Wasn't this his plan? It's like, yes, it was his yeah. plan. Um, now, did they expand a little outside of what his parameters in his mind were for the plan? Yes. But you also have to get the dragons by any means necessary mm -hmm. into the war or you're going to potentially lose. So he can't fault her for doing what she did. He's still going to try to fault her for what she did. But all I get from him is I'm terrified to be king because if you're strong, like if this was somebody like with Damon, like Damon's mindset, having the same conversation, like he would never have had that conversation because he would have been like, when I become the king, like once you're done and I'm, I'm the heir, I'm going to be king and I'm going to rule and they're not going to take my place. Him instead, he's like, oh, I'm so scared they're going to take my place when I get to be made king. In that case, you probably don't need to be the king. There's been a lot of parallels between Damon and Amond. Obviously, the name is very similar, but I think their ruling styles would also be very similar. Yeah. Tyler, what do you make of Jace being very frustrated with his mother, her planning, and he kind of wants to get involved in the action, but also doesn't want the action to lead to, it seems, any sort of questions about his legitimacy to one day be on the throne himself. Yeah, it definitely feels like he's a, a little headstrong and rash, but um, I feel like Rhaenyra, she slapped that one guard for less a couple episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised, counsel, I'm surprised yeah. nothing happened to yeah. Jace. Um, but, I mean, yeah, Jace doesn't need to rule because he's not willing to take it. And he's worried about having every little ounce of legitimacy when even having legitimacy, Rhaenyra got uh, booted out. It does feel like his patience of having things handed to him is running out and that he wants to basically be a major player to go take them. That's why he's cutting deals behind the back of Rhaenyra. That's going to come up. That's going to come along at some point we that Jace decided to make ago. that happen. We saw it a couple of weeks ago with the phrase, and it was kind of like his side mission, if you will, to try to stir up something to put on his big boy panties, if you will. I, I think Jace has got two things working against him. First, the, <laughs> the promise of an heir. We have seen that that just completely mm -hmm. goes to you-know-what many times in this series. So he's got that working <laughs> against him. And then I just love how, like you guys said, it's my idea, let's find some other dragon riders, Oh, by the way, now we've got the other people. He went full on South Park. They took her jabs <laughs> in this episode. And it's like, well, dude, you invited them to take your jobs yeah. and all that. So now that he, like you said, Army of Bastards, great line, by the way. We'll raise an Army of Bastards. That was fantastic. Um, and he knows he's one of them. So instead of being above them with the promise of an heir, he's now one of them. And I think that's why... And owes his future to, to them, Rhaenys. really. If you look at the amount of dragons that Rhaenyra and Team Black currently have, the numbers continue to grow. I have the number currently at seven at their disposal, but there's an eighth one in the one that could enter with the, uh, the, the, the at the Vale, the dragon that seems to be one of those that could tip the scales even further in Rhaenyra's direction as Reyna is currently sort of running around the Vale. And sheep Stealer? Is, is that who it is? Sheep, sheep Stealer, Stealer, yes. Uh, and uh, Damon's sons have been sent packing from the Eyrie by uh, Lady Aaron, and mm -hmm. it is that seems to be leading us to what could be the addition of an eighth dragon here. But you have Rhaenyra, you have Damon, you have Bela, you have... Uh, Jace, you have Hugh Hammer, you have Ulf the White, you have Adam of Hull. <laughs> you have a lot of dragons here paired up with dragon riders, which is exactly what Rhaenyra wanted. And you have someone like a Christian Cole, who I don't think was featured in this episode. I didn't. It I don't not, remember Christian no. Cole being in this at Cause, all. Because in the, the teaser for the next week, he's the first thing you see as they're starting to go into battle. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's like, I just realized he wasn't in this episode. This is the best episode Still I've ever around. seen. <laughs> Anyway, I'm proudly Team Green, but Christian Cole knows that this is going to be determined by dragons. He's been saying that to everyone who he can end up having a council with, and if it is ultimately determined by dragons, the betting favorite right now has to be Team Black to have quite an episode eight showing. Uh, John and Tim, you guys know that I have declared at the time... What? 
for Team Green. What are, what are we about to say? You about well, to flip flop? But but now I'm not saying I'm flip flopping. I just I don't He's like just going it. With the power. I don't like it when our leading lady just decides to you know hang out in the river. Did we all think she was about to commit suicide? I, yes, it, it sure yeah. seemed that way. Yeah. It did. I mean, they, she had lost they definitely fooled me and all that. So she's laying in the river. Uh, we've got. Uh, my guy, Lars, the, the reason I'm still on Team Green is Lars is still there. He's he's going to teach the king the crip walk, and it's going to be fine. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, everything looks like it's going swimmingly It's going there. to go yeah. great because my man has his secrets, and he's, he's going no to come He's no auto high end. tower for sure. He's not, but he's going he's gonna to be there in the end. I, I just, I, they, Team Green, I'll say we, Tim, we need to announce our Survivor Series team just like Team Black has, because Team Black now, if I look at their team, you've got Abby Wambach looking queen. You've got um, Little John from Robin Hood, men, uh, Prince, and Prince of Thieves, Men in Tights. You've got uh, Bastion from NeverEnding Story and Silverwing, and their fourth member is Kofi Kingston. Wow, they've what got their Survivor their Series team, that's, and that, we that's a good we yeah. have Eye Patch guy. <laughs> yep, <clears throat> and that's it, right? Except now. instead of what five v five, like Survivor Series typically is, it's yeah. currently seven v three. Yeah, we have a I mean, guy. That do looks they even like have three? We we need a Metal team Gear Solid there. villain. Yeah, um, it's not looking great, and I don't think the Master of Whisperers, your guy, Larry Strong, is really making Team Black. I'm sorry, Team Green, any stronger because Mm-mm. he's taking valuable information and stopping it before he can get it to where it needs to get to to rally a defense. And the next thing you know, Ulf goes, you know what? I'm going to go show my homies that I'm a dragon rider now. Why in the world would you go to the one place where you could be shot down in they were lining no those scorpions up. Real Nobody quick, believed him they? before because he was sitting I there, and then it. he started right. showing doubt. And they're like, "Wait, you're not even actually. You don't even know if you're related." And now he's like, "What's up? I actually am." Yeah, I told I you all the whole time, now. drunk in a brothel, burn this should, place to the ground. I, I was waiting listen. for it to just go full Daenerys right there. I was also. hoping that Aemon would dispatch of him lickety splits. It didn't happen as he was able to get to Vagar, but it was a little bit mm. uh, too late as he was able to only then do a reconnaissance mission and realize, like, oh gosh, we are very much. So could have been on purpose to kind of be like, hey. They're gonna chase you. Come, oh, yeah. come back and show. We'll send a we message. Power, yeah. We'll just have the mm-hmm. best shot of the whole season, maybe series here at the end to show uh, Amon exactly what's going on. Um, let's talk a little bit about Damon and what's going on with him. Obviously, mm-hmm. he is still at Heron Hall. Still, yet another hallucination nightmare. And at this point, when it happens, I just. I just have a little bit of an eye roll. I'm like, too much of a good thing can yeah. be a bad thing. So this, this time, is due to oh, scheduling conflicts, again? right? It's got to be. You're talking about... See, my wife keeps it, saying the same thing, but they gave him top billing this season. No, I... Like, I, that, that doesn't make any sense. He has top billing, and he has the worst storyline, and is not in it as much mm-hmm. as other people, I feel like. I mean, I, maybe screen time he is. I don't know. Yeah, I think the goal was to remove him, have him off on his side mission, and, you know... Go shoot Morbius too. Be able to bring back... <laughs> beloved stars of the first season but even though i think patty considine is incredible as viserys i don't want to see him again <laughs> it's only crushing the legacy of season one yeah, we never saw ned stark again i was, I was I mean, about to say imagine die. if you saw ned stark yeah. non-stop or robert baratheon non-stop Thank during you. it all yeah. yeah right it's time to just the world is already kind of small yes because we're focusing on just one house primarily that there's no reason to have callbacks to something that yeah. is so small in scope. And I am ready to see the hallucin- hallucination trips end. <laughs> Damon, though, his quest to unite the Riverlands, it continues after old Grover Tully died last week. <laughs> old man Grover. I know you're a big Muppet guy. you got to love all the names. <laughs> Oscar <laughs> Tully. Grover. <laughs> Oscar Tully is now in charge. And Oscar Tully, I mean... He's decided he's going to lay down the law there, Punk and he's going to. Yeah. You know, he's not going to be little kid no more. Yeah. He's he's not going to be just talked over. And while the River Lords think that Damon is the absolute worst, Riverlanders are not oath breakers, and they have decided that they will stick with the oath in which they were instructed by their lord. Damon does have to though take sort of a back seat. It's a little bit of a hit to his ego, and it has him, I think, in this hallucination with Viserys questioning whether or not he actually does want the crown after all is that the takeaway you guys had because it looks like now he's kind of scared of the idea of taking that and will he have performance anxiety when he re sadly 
this re-enters is, the battle. This, sadly, this is why he has spent all season two at Heron Hall was to go through this identity crisis moment where it was, I want the crown, but now we're going to have to put you in this weird situation where you're going to see your life play out and all these images. Right. Basically, you know, goes to Christmas past. Come Correct. back. He's having his Here's Scrooge moment. Here's what he be. He, it's a wonderful life. It's all thrown together in Game of Thrones style, saying you would be better off serving the queen or whoever than actually being the king. And that's why we've spent all these episodes there. It's still dragon. <laughs> dragon. But <laughs> it's it's it, that's the point of it eventually. We could have done like a two or three episode arc yeah, of that instead of like I mean, six. But you're yeah, right. You know, yeah. yeah. But Damon, quick to act when asked to dispatch of Lord Blackwater, and he does just that. So that's a little bit of a shade of the old Damon. But Absolutely. what will be left of Damon's emotional state when the big battle actually occurs? And then, you know, we talk about Aegon being up and walking. We talk about Laris being behind those attempts at recovery because he knows that's his power play because mm. Aegon's his boy. However, you know, did Aemon make a huge mistake in burning Aegon to the point where he's lost himself a dragon rider here and it's going to end up determining his own fate? We will have to see here in the final episode of this season. But the clubfoot, the master of whisperers, I just feel like he's dropping the ball and I can't wait for Otto to get back to business doing what he does best. Allison, however, the unhappiest of all of Team Green. And, you know, it's I, probably a tie between her and her daughter because I feel like. They're both just, they're both just yeah. miserable. We got to see one of them in this episode yeah. being uh, extremely sad. As she decides to leave the city, she goes off. I got sort of a vibe of what Rhaenyra did when she went off with Sir Kristen Cole, and they killed the boar and all of that. And I, um, I, I don't know if Allison is going to be able to assume that leadership position that she covets right. so dearly. We shall see. There's one episode left. John, it is set to be one of actual consequence where we're going to see things setting up season three here. If there's, I, I know that you're sort of ahead narratively compared to the rest of us, mm -hmm. but if there's one thing they've got to get right tonally in the final episode of the season, because once again, <clears throat> eight episodes, not 10, what is that thing that's going to help land this bird that's in the air? So, <clears throat> in just watching the teaser, that's all I've really done is watch the teaser for yeah. the next week that comes on after the show. Um, I think they need to get Corliss and kind of the Valerian fleet because you can see a bunch of ships in it that it seems like we're finally going to kind of have a little payoff with that. Yeah. Pay it off. Like, pay it off in the right way. So, I feel like that's one aspect of it because everything we've seen – for the most part, has been very ground-based, and then occasionally a dragon comes in and helps. But you're going to have not only ground-based, not only dragons, but you're going to have the sea as well. And the sea, if you remember back to Game of Thrones, is what ultimately ended up killing one of the dragons, too, okay. um, with uh, Euron Greyjoy taking right. one down with the scorpion. So, like, the sea can play a major part in the overall battle, land, sea, and sky. So you have to get all of those elements right. you got the dragon fight right with Renice versus um, Aemon and Aegon, Aegon, and then you kind of have to, okay, that was good. Now let's take it to another step because we have even more dragons now yep. to be a part of this fight, but also you're adding the sea into it. So as you're getting to that massive scale battle that, like, we're ultimately getting to a giant civil war and an actual battle, you know, battles that will actually happen, I assume that's how episode eight will end with one of those battles. You got to knock it out of the park because some of the most memorable stuff from Game of Thrones in general are the battles, Battle of the Bastards, which this kind of seems to be another version of Battle of the Bastards of sort. Um, but, you know, you got to get the battle right and you got to get the big pieces of the battle right. right. It is going to be quite intense to see how this thing puts a bow on season two. We already know season three is coming, so they don't have to absolutely turn the entire world upside down in this final episode. But we will reunite our small council and we will have a full spoiler discussion about season two, the hits, the misses, the highs, the lows, and whether or not episode eight works for us. That's all coming up next week. Make sure you are subscribed here to the Meltdown to be a part of that. Brian Pavlik, thank you so much for being a participant. I've metaphorically put the council <laughs> ball back in its place for Rockstar to pick up next week. Well, you will be here as well. Oh, Get another Tyler, one then. <laughs> we'll give Rockstar a new ball. all of your contributions, <laughs> and I hope that when you roam these places late at night here in the office that you don't have any sort of hair and hall <laughs> dream sequences that are affecting you seeing Jim with no clothes on or something like that. I was about to say yeah, the same I'm thing. I'm sorry. That's, that's what I would think. 
It would be. Okay. And uh, oh, yikes. <laughs> John, we recommend all of our <laughs> lovely and loyal small folk go to become part of you know something special at our title sponsor, MyBookie. Go to MyBookie.ag. Use that promo code next round you see in the corner always on our show. Promo code next round, MyBookie.ag. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere in the sports book, the casino, the live casino, the slots, anything you want to do, you can do it at MyBookie.ag. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, and we'll be back with our Season 2 recap next week right here on The Meltdown.